Hi guys, I'm Shmi. Hello and welcome back to the channel where today you join me in the storage with the Shmi Mobiles for a bit of a talk. Now things have of course been crazy in recent weeks and there are a couple of things I would like to or just tell you about today and run through but in particular I'd like to talk about the repainting that has been done with my SLS Black Series. Am I completely destroying the value of that car? We'll talk about a few things like why I didn't buy the one that's already painted in Mystic Blue, why I'm painting it rather than Topaz skin and wrap, what's going on with the car market in general given everything that's happening around us, plus there are a few things in particular with the Senna that I'd like to show you and talk about later on as well. So let's have a quick chat, a bit of an update, answer perhaps some of your questions that are currently outstanding. The main thing to talk about then is whether I have completely and catastrophically destroyed the value of my new car, my Mercedes-Benz SLS AMG Black Series by repainting it from the original Himalaya Grey to my choice of Mystic Blue. Now if the comments are to be believed, my car must now be worthless. I should be throwing it away because no one could possibly ever want it. Well, as these things go, I'd like to give you a few more ideas and thoughts today, some things you might not have previously considered that potentially could change your perspective on whether this was the right move in terms of collectible value, but also, I think most importantly, in terms of what it means to me. Before we get onto all of that though, I'd like to touch on what's going on at the moment around the world, and in particular in regards to my YouTube channel. So everything you have seen uploaded on the Shmi 150 channel prior to this point and in fact including some of the videos still to come were all filmed before the UK lockdown guidelines. Now the lockdown is vital to help us all get through this as quickly as possible but I want to stress that the guidelines were not being breached by videos that I have uploaded. In fact these vary from country to country, state to state or region to region, it's different around the world but these videos were all uploaded ahead. Myself and other YouTubers who have been doing this for many years all talked about what was happening in China, in Italy, and it was kind of obvious to predict that this would happen over here as well. As such, I went out, filmed a whole load of videos in February, also in early March. In fact, one I'm going to touch on in a moment with a kind of sneaky clue as to what was coming if you'd watched it. A few people worked it out at the time, actually. But the big thing that I really want to emphasize right now is that in the videos I've uploaded up to this point, there's been a hard-coded disclaimer, there's been a mention in the description, there's been a mention in the pinned comment, there has been replies on every platform, Platform, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, you name it. And there was even a video ahead of all of this called What's Next, where I explained that the videos to come were all pre-shot. The thing that's kind of happened and has been a bit of an eye-opener to me along the way has been the vile side of the internet, to be honest. The messages that have come in not understanding this. Yes, I know 99% of you guys, the squad, you know exactly what's going on. You know that I film these videos. It's kind of like a TV show having a schedule. I knew what was happening. I made sure that I filmed as much content as possible. But a few people who haven't necessarily got it have been seriously aggressive. It's been a horrible time in terms of the messages, to be completely honest. But my channel is about the positivity. It's about these cars, the passion for supercars. It's what brought us all together. This isn't a channel for medical or political discussion. This is a channel for sharing what we all love. On which note, let me actually rewind and just quickly play the clip in question. And then the good old SLS AMG Black Series. I love this thing. There are about 350 SLS Blacks in total in the world. One day, one day, one of those will be in my garage. Mark my words. What could possibly be quite so significant then about that clip, aside from the obvious that I do now have an SLS Black Series? Well, that was filmed when I visited Barry Skolnick's iconic collection, the most amazing car garage in Miami, Florida, the first stop on my tour in the USA in February. In fact, I uploaded that clip on the 8th of February, but I've got a confession that I need to make. At that point, when I said those words, I had actually already bought the car that you now know of as my new Shmimobile, as my SLS Black Series. Now the reason for that was I was out in the USA for about two weeks. After it, I would have about a 10 day gap before going to the Geneva Motor Show. Of course, at that point, there was no crystal ball to know what was going to happen, to know the Geneva Motor Show would be canceled, to know exactly what was going to happen to the world in a very short time thereafter. But in the USA, in those two weeks, I shot about, I think, 20, 21 videos. In fact, probably a few more because there are some I haven't even uploaded 
uploaded now. But that meant that I had all of the videos set for the gap through those 10 days afterwards to go out to collect the SLS, which I wanted to reveal when my channel reached 2 million subscribers, which I then did do so. And it's a huge thanks as always to you guys for being part of this adventure. But it meant in those 10 days, I went over to Germany, I collected the new car, I brought it back home, I imported it, did all the registration process, started taking it to Chartwell for the paint sample, the assembly work began or stripped it down, then it got painted. In fact, the car was actually blue before the UK lockdown. A bit of a confession there as well. So this all happened in that window. Then of course in early March things were changing very quickly. It looked like I was going to have to go full pace in order to have some good content to share with you guys to keep bringing you positive exciting content along the way. Which is why after Geneva when I filmed about 10 videos in four days I then used the next week or two to go full on filming videos with all of these guys. And in fact, lots of you have noticed this. In the videos, there's traffic, businesses are open. These are things you can't see right now. So it's obvious they were filmed before all of this happened at least. But I do understand perhaps there could have been, I guess, more of an explanation. I wish I knew what was coming. None of us did. None of us, I guess, still knew, do know what's gonna be happening next. So the SLS was kind of already ready. All of these videos were prepared. A bit of a series for you guys, which of course now I'm staggering out. I had intended to bring them all out very quickly, but obviously there's not exactly a lot that I can film. So I'm gonna do my best to publish them as and when I can. Anyway, enough of the backstory. Onto some of your questions about the value of the SLS Black Series. And the first thing I would like to touch on is something that a lot of you noticed, this stunning car. Now this, I believe, is the world's only factory painted Mystic Blue SLS Black Series, and it is currently for sale at Alain Class out in Dubai. Now, of course, I know the guys at the dealership well. I have visited and filmed there many a time in the past, and I would have loved to have bought that car, but there is one thing I need to say about it. This is a collector's car. This is a zero miles delivery mileage example, which of course means it commands a premium price tag. By the time that you've bought it, transported it over to the UK, had to pay about 20% VAT, plus about 10% duty on top of that, and probably some other charges along the way, you end up at about double the price of buying one on the continent. Now, as much as I would have loved it, I also know that I want to go and drive my car and not feel worried about it. And if you're driving a zero mileage car, then you have to start thinking about the value and then it would have been a very expensive move to make. So that car is sitting waiting for someone else to acquire it. And it is going to be a lovely, lovely car when it finds a new home. On to the main question then finally, what happens to the value if you respray a collector's car? And this is where it all depends primarily what you started with. If we're talking a rare classic, a car with a clean history, it's never been damaged, you've got a perfect record of all of the services and the receipts, it's been owned by one person from new and done very few miles, as well as being in one of very few original colours, and it still has perfect paintwork, and then you went to a dodgy garage to repaint it in a different colour from a different manufacturer and had no documentation that that was ever done, that is how you destroy the value of a collector's car. By way of an example, if you have a Ferrari F40, it's had one owner, done five 500 miles in original Ferrari Rosso Corsa paintwork and you took it to repaint it in let's say my cerulean blue like on the Senna and on the G63 that would be very 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 silly this is where my specific SLS black series comes a bit into play now I was pretty adamant for a car with some mileage which also helps in terms of the import process you need a car that's done more than 6,000 kilometers to avoid having to pay the VAT again which of course is quite a significant amount on a car like this it needs to be six months old and have done more than 6,000 kilometers. So that was an absolute must criteria rule of importing a car to the UK coming out of the EU, in this case, out of Germany. Now my car, as I had mentioned, I actually saw it six years earlier. It was wrapped in a ring police team livery. It had also been on display at various shows and events. So we've already got a car that's done some miles, been wrapped and been on show stands. These are things that turn collectors very far away from this kind of car, not to mention my plans ahead. I'm gonna take it to VMAX. I'm gonna drive the Nürburgring Nordschleife. I'm gonna do track days. I'm gonna fly it around the world. I'm gonna take it on rallies and I'm gonna have some fun with it. These are things that in terms of longevity of value in a collector's car, don't really help. 
So at the end of the day, my car has all of its service records. Mechanically, it's perfect. It's been driven evenly across the years. It's been serviced every year by Mercedes-Benz Munich correctly and properly. That was the most important thing to me because ultimately, mechanically, well, that matters a lot in terms of what I'm going to be using it for. But my car had sat on the market for something like six months or so before it got bought, which said to me that even though it was in a very rare color, quite an individual color, it hadn't screamed to other collectors that they wanted that one. So while the color looked beautiful, nobody had gone for it. So that tells me that that color wasn't really very important or somebody else would have bought it. The price wasn't exactly bad at all. Now, the other thing that's really interesting and very lucky with the timing of when I did buy my car, so I paid for it kind of in mid late February, around the 20th of February. And the big thing about that was that was when the currency was best in my favor. In fact, my car to pay right now, or in fact, two or three weeks after, would have been more than 40 or 50,000 pounds more expensive just down to the currency, the same price in euros. That's how crazy the market has been recently with everything that's happening. So it meant for me that, well, I feel like I got a pretty good deal on the car just after Brexit had been confirmed. Everything was kind of settling down before it all obviously spiraled off again and ultimately meant that I feel with the car a bit more freedom to do as I would like with it because of the type of car that it is and the plans that I've got for it in the future. And one way I described this, I think over on Instagram, was rather than it depreciating some theoretical value of a car that I don't ever intend to sell. It's a permanent member of the Shmimobiles alongside you know, some of these cars that we have right here. I've appreciated my personalization of it and my love for that car. And ultimately, at the end of the day, I've added the car to the collection to enjoy my way. And if that's a Mystic Blue, that's kind of the best way to do it. I do also want to answer some of your other more common questions, including why I didn't go for Solar Beam Yellow. That probably would have been the bookie's favorite, but also why didn't I wrap the car or even use a topaz skin like we did with the G63 when we did it in the MSO Cerulean Blue and the Satin Navy to be the perfect match to the Senna? Well, there is actually a pretty good reason and explanation for this. Of course, topaz skin is introduced to both protect the original paintwork and temporarily change the color with the ability to reverse it and return it back to how it was afterwards. In the case of the G63, it is not a car that I'm going to own forever. Underneath, it is actually metallic black. But obviously, crucially, people only buy G63s if they're black, white, or gray. People don't buy dual tone blue G63. So this has to, at some point, be returned when I've owned it for a couple of years. Of course, no time uh, any time in the near future. But that is why this, and I'm very happy with it, by the way, the finish is brilliant. It doesn't really get swirly at all. As you can see, it looks immaculate, which is really, really impressive stuff. But it's basically a respray. It costs about the same as a respray, almost, well, a little bit less, because basically you still have to dismantle the entirety of the car. It's not an easy operation. It's a hugely involving operation to take everything off and to change the colors of it with many different layers, the base peelable layers, the painted layers, and of course, the lacquer that's on the top of it. So in the case of the SLS, if I did Topaz skin, I would also, given the mileage and the plans for it, want to put PPF on top. Topaz skin can still get chipped. It's significantly stronger than if you don't have it. You can see around the front, it's basically, well, basically perfect. There are a few small niggles here and there. But with the amount of driving and the future plan to keep the SLS, I wanted it perfect. So if you've PPF'd on the top of skin, we don't really know if you ever have to replace it, if you can take the PPF off without having to respray effectively the entire car. The other side of it is that it's my car forever. I want to keep it, I want it in my color. I didn't really care for the color underneath. I'm not a big fan generally of grayscale cars. I like my bright colors. Of course, the GTR Pro is white with the black stripe, but generally speaking, and obviously the GT is still under the Goodwill car cover that I collected at Topaz as well. In fact, I think all of these cars have something from Topaz on them. Skin, Goodwill, PPF, 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 PPF. So nothing against Topaz. In fact, I had a long conversation with the guys. We sat down and talked it all through. So my car, when it's finished at Chartwell, will go to Topaz for PPF. But ultimately, with my future plans to still own the car in a decade, in two decades, in three decades, I want it blue. So that was the decision, basically. Now, I didn't want to wrap it because a wrap does not have this finish, the paintwork finish. You know, this is a full, perfect finish on the car. Well, like all of the painted cars, wraps just aren't the same. They're great for a tour, for six months, for a year, for maybe even two or three years. But long term, it's not the same 
as having a car fully painted, done completely properly from the beginning, which is why also I went to Chartwell, because of the job they did on this car, but also because they're Mercedes approved, doing everything the correct way. And by the way, you can imagine I had a lot of discussions about this. They impressed me a lot in terms of how much attention to, and, and care they would take over the entire project. So a few other things to talk about as well. The market at the moment, the car market, whether it's regular cars, supercars, or hypercars, the entire thing has frozen. Sales have stopped, dealerships are closed, banks and finance companies are pretty much shut up as well at the moment, and of course you can't go and pick up a car. There are also things that are gonna have an impact for the future. Designers and engineers are currently on pause. Marketing and sales teams are currently on pause. Factories are even on pause, which means a lot of cars aren't gonna be built or will be delayed, which will have an impact uh, on some of the future Schmimobiles. But I tell you what, when it comes to the values of cars like these, in fact, the values of everything, they kind of just dived off the edge of a cliff. At least I think, everything's stuck. You can't sell a car, so a car has pretty much, well, no value at the moment. But if, let's say, 12 months ago, you had bought a new 812 Superfast, spec'd up to 350 grand, you needed to get rid of it now, probably gonna be offered like 200 grand, you probably won't even sell it unless you have to. So there's gonna be a bit of a bloodbath of cars that need to be sold, and there'll be a lot of cars, I guess, that people will just hold on to. Now, I'm lucky that I don't intend to sell any of the Schmimobiles anytime soon. In fact, of course, again, hindsight is a wonderful thing, crystal ball and all of that. Probably wouldn't have bought the SLS Black Series if I had seen what was coming, but don't get me wrong, I'm gonna look at the positive side and enjoy the car uh, as I always do. This channel is about exactly that. So I'm gonna have a good time with the car, whatever it is that I'm able to do with it down the line. But generally speaking, these cars, it's not that the values have done this, you can't sell them at the moment. You couldn't sell a car. So I think it's, a, it's an interesting time in terms of the car market in general right now and what's gonna be happening next. There are two other things to show you. One is what I've got down there and the other involves the Senna. Now, when I took this car out for a drive and uploaded the video of it, a few of you noticed something peculiar about the inside of it, in particular to do with the material on the A-pillars. Now the Senna has this entire carbon fiber roll cage with the loosest of kind of panels on the inside of it. Of course, it's completely stripped out basically to make it as light as possible. In fact, just to remind you quickly of the interior of this car, it is all carbon fiber, carbon dash, only the pads over the airbags and the things that you need, not even any proper storage or closed compartments or anything on the inside of it. But what happens basically when I stick the camera on the very front of the car here facing backwards into the canopy to see the driver you get a quite unusual perspective which means that you see on the other side that Alcantara trim which to be honest doesn't have the most perfect fit up towards the very top of course it's the same on both sides it's the same also on any Senna because basically it's as light as it possibly can be so that's why it looks a little bit weird you don't really notice that yourself you can't see from in the car, unless I guess you hold the camera right down towards the nose bridge, which is just not something that you ever actually do. Anyway, to show you what we've got here, thanks and a big shout out to Juice Your Ride. If you go to Juice Your Ride, you can find the trickle charger or the battery conditioner for your specific car. And they have very kindly hooked me up with the chargers that I require for each of the cars that I don't currently have one. So for example, the lithium chargers for the AMG GTR Pro, different chargers needed for different batteries. Their system helps you to find exactly the right one. But the GTR, GTR Roads, the GTR Pro have a lithium battery where the GT, the GTS and the GTC have a normal uh, normal battery instead. So I've got those also for the SLS and the normal chargers for the Focus RSs, the Supra and the G63 and all of the correct adapters as well. So with the SLS, for example, that's the one that it needs to latch onto, uh, I believe, in the boot of the car. So big thanks to them. These are obviously seriously going to help, especially with the cars basically being in kind of hibernation hibernation for a mostly unknown period of time. We don't really know at this stage what the future is going to hold. I guess that is more or less it then for today's update. But in terms of the actual question, have I devalued the SLS Black Series? Possibly. Who really knows? To be honest, it just doesn't matter. It is appreciated, like I said, in my love for the car. It looks spectacular, and I can't wait to share it very soon. In fact, an interesting tidbit from behind the scenes, I'd actually booked to respray an SLS Black Series. It costs about 20,000 pounds or so in total before I had even bought my SLS Black Series. That's how much I wanted to make it Mystic Blue. I just needed to find the right car to start from, and of course, did so in the car that you're going to see in the not too 
too distant future. Again, a big thanks to Juice Your Ride for the trickle chargers, which I need to get hooked up on the GTR Pro and some of the other cars as well and work out everything that's going on. Remember, I do have a few more videos coming from before the lockdown here in the UK, where we have pretty specific guidelines. You can go out for medical purposes. You can go out for infrequent shopping for your groceries. You can go out daily for a bit of exercise. And you can also go to work if you cannot work from home. It doesn't need to be an essential work or a key worker job. Any work, if you can't do it from home, you can travel out to go to that as well. That's all found on the UK government website. So there's a lot to come. Please don't be surprised if you see me driving out and about because it was all filmed before unless I state otherwise. Thank you very much though for watching. As always guys, I hope you've enjoyed this little update with the Shmimobiles and a bit more talk about the colour of the SLS Black Series. But that's it for this time and I'll see you again very soon. Cheers! <laughs>